So you've dived headfirst into the world of hackintoshing, only to find yourself drowning in a sea of kernel panics, frozen screens, and endless troubleshooting. You've poured countless hours into this endeavor, and it feels like your computer is taunting you with every failed boot attempt. Don't despair. While hackintoshing can be challenging, it's not impossible. In this video, you will be able to fine-tune your EFI configuration. In a nutshell, we will fine-tune the automated EFI generated from Opcore Simplify through the reference of this OpenCore Sanity Checker, a web-based tool designed to validate your EFI configuration. It checks your config.plist file against a set of rules and schemas to identify potential issues or inconsistencies that could prevent your Hackintosh from booting correctly. We will use PropertTree to edit the config.plist available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. We will use the generated EFI configuration from Opcore Simplify and followed by the USB port mapping, which was edited using PropertTree. I will link those video on the description box. If you use OCAT to edit the config, don't open it using PropertTree, because sometimes using different plist editor can mess up your configuration. Let's copy the generated EFI from Opcore Simplify under the results folder, I will copy it into my desktop for ease of navigation. Then download PropertTree on GitHub. Click the code button, download zip. I will move it into the desktop also. You can run the .bat if you're on Windows. I will run this command file on Mac OS. A terminal window will show. If you don't have Python on your computer, it will ask you to download and install. Press Y and enter on the keyboard to start the installation. Minimize the terminal window behind. Now let's open the config.plist on my desktop under the OC subfolder. In Windows, you can collapse the plus and minus button to see the underlying subsettings, while on Mac, these down and right arrows. Now these are the main sections of your config.plist, namely ACPI, booter, device properties, kernel, miscellaneous, NVRAM, Platform Info, and UEFI. Now let's head over to the OpenCore Sanity Checker website. Then choose your processor. I will select Broadwell under the Laptop section. Select the OpenCore version to its latest one. You can drag or upload your config.plist. This will compare our config into Dortania's recommended settings. Let me arrange these windows for better viewing. The thing that you will keep on eye is these icons. A yellow exclamation point icon indicates a potential issue or warning in your config.plist. A blue icon is the informational messages, typically less critical than warnings or errors. Red circle with an X typically indicates a critical error or a serious issue in your config that could prevent your Hackintosh from booting correctly. Now let's scroll down and look for any errors. Under the Booter section, we have it, over Quirks, then Enable Safe Mode slide. If you click on it, there are some information that you can refer. Read what it says, then we will navigate into Proper Tree to validate our settings, collapse the dropdown, and go into Booter and Quirks. To interchange the value, just double-click the value and select True or False. If it says Enabled, it means you will set it to true, and if disabled, that would be false. On the type column, whenever you see boolean, typically the value can be only true or false. When you see number, then it will be numbers. If string, it will be a words or letters. If data, then the value could be letters and numbers. Now look for the next one. The checker might point out potential issues with your configuration that could lead to minor problems or instability incorrectly configured settings that could impact your system's behavior. Adjust the necessary settings as possible. For this resize Apple GPU bars, the value on it can be either 0 or negative 1. As stated on the expected value, it has to be negative 1. Just double-click the value then type in negative 1. The next portion is on the kernel, under quirks. Let's validate the needed adjustments. For this Apple CPU config lock, pay attention to what it says. It has some application in terms of your processor or BIOS settings. Adjust them if necessary. There are also brand-specific settings, like on Dell and Sony VAIO system. Adjust them if necessary and applies to your machine. 
For the secure boot model, you can type in default or disabled, as for the recommendation on this case was disabled. So I will type that into the value text box. Now carefully go all through the remaining settings that need some fine tuning. Take your time and patience. Once done, go to File then Save or Command S on your keyboard. You can now close Proper Tree. To keep your Hackintosh configuration organized, consider creating a spreadsheet or notes. This will help you track changes, identify issues, and troubleshoot problems more efficiently. Create a spreadsheet with columns for the path that needs adjustment, the current value of the setting in your config.p list, the suggested value from the sanity checker, the first attempt, is the new value you've set. Fill in the current values of each setting. Input the suggested values from the sanity checker. Record the changes you make to your config. You can also add some notes to add any relevant notes or explanations. Benefits of using a spreadsheet. A clarity to visualize changes and their impact. Efficiency to quickly identify and address issues. A good documentation that you can reference for future troubleshooting. Having a version control to track different configurations and easily revert changes. By using this organized approach, you can streamline your Hackintosh configuration process and avoid unnecessary headaches. The first attempt. This column in your spreadsheet is where you'll document the specific changes you've made to your config.p list. This could involve modifying existing values. If you've changed the value of an existing setting, specify the old value and the new value. If you've removed a setting or text, note the removal. The second attempt is just experimenting with different settings. If you're unsure about the first attempt or particular setting, Try experimenting with different values to see what works best for your machine, then try and test it out. So what's next? you finally done on validating your EFI configuration. All you have to do is to copy this edited or modified EFI that you made. Use Ventoy USB flash drive to boot into Windows 10 Portable, and by using Disk Genius, locate your ESP partition. Delete the old EFI folder then replace or drag your edited EFI on your ESP partition, reboot your computer, and try to boot into your Hackintosh. See if that work out. If you follow the steps correctly and your configuration is accurate, your Hackintosh should boot successfully. Remember, patience and attention to detail are key when configuring a Hackintosh. What if the EFI still doesn't work? Here are some troubleshooting steps you can take. Review your config.plist. Ensure that every setting is accurate and relevant to your specific hardware. Update the BIOS. Updating the firmware can often resolve compatibility issues and improve performance. Configure the correct BIOS settings. Ensure optimal settings for your hardware. Tweak some of the options on your BIOS. Enable them if available on your settings. Utilize diagnostic tools. Add verbose boot. Enable verbose boot to get detailed logs about the boot process Put dash V on your boot args so that you can see which part of the log your config stops. This can help you diagnose later on. You can use those logs or error codes for you to diagnose. On Dortania's website, link on the description box, there are some troubleshooting guide that you can refer and rectify the issue. Don't be afraid to experiment with the settings. Try playing around with the configuration that applies to your hardware specification. You already have a baseline of settings that you can adjust and fine-tune furthermore. Remember, hackintoshing is a complex process, and troubleshooting can be time-consuming. Be patient, persistent, and don't be afraid to experiment. By carefully following the Dortania guide and using these troubleshooting tips, you should be able to successfully install macOS on your system. If you manage to make it work, feel free to visit Li Zhuang 2801's GitHub page. He has a discussion for those that made it through using Opcore Simplify. This can help him better to develop and improve this tool. Participate in sharing the issues you encountered using the tool. That's about it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on the comment section below. See you on the next one.